everybody. Thanks for tuning into Border City Rock Talk, where you get great news, great interviews from great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Today, I've got um, Jeff Tate's right-hand man, uh, guitar phenom from uh, Glasgow, Scotland. How are you doing, Kieran Robertson? Doing good, brother. How are you, man? Nice to, nice to talk to you. Not too bad, actually. I'm uh, going to touch on a, a story how uh, I met you. Um, but before I do that, I'm uh, going to do the cliche thing. Please, guys, hit that subscribe button. Um, it just helps me get more and more great interviews. It just takes a, a couple seconds, and it doesn't cost you a penny. So with, uh, with that out of the way, I'm not sure if you're aware. You probably aren't. You're so busy. But my, my very first um, kick at the can interviewing uh, rock stars uh, was, was Jeff Tate. Now, okay. You guys played a show in Traverse City, Michigan, about five years ago at a place called Streeters, or Ground Ground Zero, I think. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember that show at all? Like, I'm, do you do you remember Traverse? Was, was City? that was was that the? Um, it would have been Mind Crime, right? It wouldn't have been. It would have been doing Mind Crime in full, or was it the acoustic tour? Yeah. No, it wasn't the acoustic tour. Okay. But um, it was. But in any event, uh, you, this might bring you to a. Uh, I came into town. I was looking to talk to Jeff before the, uh, cause we did a phoner. I was going to talk to Jeff uh, before the show and we went to the venue and it was like in the afternoon and nobody was around, but, but this, this, this rock star looking guy comes out and uh, it was like, I'm, I'm like, are you with the, the um, Jeff's band or anything? I'm like, I'm my name is so-and-so I'm from Sault Ste. Marie came up to see the show. And I'm just curious if he's around. And I remember you telling me he's at home Depot. With Susan. He's at Home Depot. <laughs> Getting something for the bus, probably, right? Something like that. Yeah, you told me that. You're like, no, man, he's at uh, Home Depot um, doing something. And uh, I thought that was funny. But yeah, I met you in the parking lot. That's so cute, man. Um, moving on, you've been in the band um, for how many years have you uh, been Jeff's uh, go to guitarist? Six years now, brother. It's been a, been a long six or come, Jesus, yeah, coming just over six years now. So uh, when you when you met me, I must have been pretty new. Yeah, I think that was one of the first couple times uh, he went out solo. Um, in any event, um, you've uh, worked with fellow Canuck Scott Moulton. I have amazing, amazing guitar player, great guy. Yeah, Scott's great, and uh, I think you and Jack are the two mainstays, Jack Ross, in the band right now, like, since he started, yeah. he pretty much kept a couple uh, around, you know, since the beginning. Yeah, man, um, when I got in the band, like, six years ago, um, uh, they'd had, um, it was John Moyer from Disturbed that was playing, and then they had um, Jeff's son-in-law Tim Fernley, who's an amazing bass player, um, but he uh, he was just looking to retire from the road. You know, he's got um, wife and kids at home, so mm -hmm. they said, "Who do you know? Does anybody know anybody?" And uh, Jack has been in bands with me since we've been like twelve years, you know, four, fourteen years old. You know, so he's always believed in my 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 shitty bands and stuff I did when I was young. So once I get the opportunity, I'm like, I know Jack and. He's, he's a great, great fit for the band, and Jeff, Jeff just loves him, you know? That's awesome. So um, so I'm speaking to you right now from Glasgow. What's, uh, what's the scene, uh, the, the rock scene in, uh, in Scotland now? You know, honestly, I think I'm, I hate to say this as well to sound like an arse, but I, I feel like this has been the longest time I've, I've came, to, came home in a while, and I, I'm so out of touch with, like, mm. everything that's going on here because I've been in tour for for you know uh, six years pretty much i am um, I, I think there's a lot of good there's a lot of good up-and-coming rock bands um in glasgow like your mason hill your anchor lane and stuff um but i i've only sort of i've not been a part of that i've been you know i like the sort of older older rock bands mm. um but yeah man glasgow's glasgow's a weird place um like there's there's a couple of good rock bars but um i i've, I've i feel like now you know i've not been around too much to know what's going on in the scene unfortunately yeah so do you reside uh i guess you reside in the states now permanently pretty much yeah yeah man i'm a i'm a homeless rock star i guess i just sort of um if i'm if i'm off for an extended period of time i, I normally just rent a place um but I'm, we tour nine months out of the year yeah. um i mostly mostly live with jeff in seattle he's got a 
big house and then we we always working or writing or you know um yeah. but yeah man I'm home home seeing my family now which is nice and then uh, next week or the week after I, I go back to go back to stay with Jeff in Seattle and get get rehearsing for this next tour. So speaking of the tour, what's the name of the tour? And um, and I think it's you, you were talking uh, earlier. It's going to be a medley of um, of the hits of the Queen's Reich, Jeff Tate um, era hits. Is that correct? Yeah, man. Um, I'm really excited for this tour. It's uh, it's going to. We've been doing albums for ages, you know, yeah. Jeff and Empire, and and that's cool. I love doing that. But um, I feel this is this big it's called the Jeff Tate Big Rock Tour. Um, I've seen people call it the big hit stop, but I think we we we've put it out as the big rock big rock tour. Um, it's going to be all all the hits, um, a couple of couple of weird ones, you know that um, you know fans have not heard and you know in ages. Um, but it's basically big big rock tour. We've got um, a bigger band this time as well. We've got a keyboard player and um, you know it's sort of big big party tour. It's kind of nice. we're trying to sell it as for Christmas, you know. That's awesome. Um, you so get to come along to any of the shows? I, I think I might hit the one in uh, uh, the machine shop in Flint, Michigan. I'm close to that. I uh, love, love that place, man. Yeah, dude, come down. Let's grab a beer. For sure. Um, I'm just going to do a bit of translation for you. Um, when you were saying um, hits, um, North Americaners are, are thinking hats. So I'm just going to translate. Uh, yeah, right. The, so, the hits. Yeah, yeah you've got a strong <laughs> accent, Mr. Robertson. <laughs> I know, man. Dude, I'm I'm trying to slow down. Um, normally when I'm in America, I slow down, but being back at home, it, it, you know what I mean. You go, you go right into it. But it's funny because nobody, when I'm in America, everybody goes, "Your accent's so so strong, man." And then I come home, and everybody thinks I'm a dick because like, oh, you sound American now, you know. So um, <laughs> yeah. I'll try, and, I'll try to slow down. <laughs> you you've, you've got the Yankee uh, twang going on, yeah, when you're in Scotland. Um, what, so actually, um, I, I, I'm very impressed with your guitar playing and not only just the, uh, physical playing, but on stage, you're dynamic. You don't, uh, stand there and play like you jump around. And, and I mean, I play guitar, you know, obviously, um, amateur, but just to walk around playing guitar and leads and stuff is, 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 you know, can be challenging, but you, you do jumping and stuff like that. Um, how did you get so flexible and good? And, um, who were your influences uh, growing up? Thank you so man. I, I really appreciate that. Um I I honestly was um I um guitar is more to me I I don't want to see a I never wanted to see the band that were standing on stage that were incredible musicians. I always wanted to see the rock stars, you know. Uh, I think the first big band I loved Kiss, you know, so seeing Paul Stanley, he he's kind of always when I was yeah. first developing the crap, I was Paul Stanley, he was you know, Nicky Six, just the sort of classic, mm -hmm. classic rock star guys. Um, but I mean, the, playing guitar is all I've really done. I sort of, you know, dropped out of school pretty young and just, just uh, even before that, I was doing music. You know, I always just knew I wanted to, to be a, be a musician. But you guys like Paul Stanley and, and, and Nicky Six, you know, they, they inspire yeah. the stage stuff. But guitar wise, I, I love Mick Mars. Um, mm. I think he's the most underrated guitar player. He makes one guitar sound like, Three guitars. Um, I think John Fies did a great job as well. He's an yeah. incredible guitar player. Um, and Jeff Jeff Buckley. Uh, um, I, I love love that. And um, you know, I, I feel like I was never a, a shredder guitar player. You know, um, and obviously Chris DeGarmo uh, was brought up in Queens, right? So yes. you know, the Degar the just a god. You know, so I'm I was just you. trying to do that the best I can. Yeah, I I read something recently because um, I I tried to get a hold of you. Chris and like oh man he was he, he was so great the band but I find out now like he's like he's like a Bruce Dickinson in a way he's a pilot he is yeah man from from what Jeff's told me he's a um like a private jet pilot um but I could be I could be getting that wrong um I, I one day hope I get in a flight and they go you know this is your pilot like I, I need it'd to be like to a, you, man it'd be like a sort of Queens reunion tour without the other guys but you got Chris DeGarmo uh, flying you around and jumping on stage for a few songs here and there. That'd be cool. It, that that would be the dream, man. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, I know I know Chris and Jeff are good, and I am, um, you know, I see calls a couple of times. Um, big big inspiration, man. Um, so you know, right hope he's hope he's doing well. Cool. Um, so what's your fate? Like, I know you're getting these cliche questions, but I mean, for my subscribers that may have not 
um, seeing any interviews with you. Um, what would be your um, favorite Queensryche album? And um, if you had to, if somebody put a hypothetical gun to your head and said, what's your favorite Queensryche song, what would that be? It's so funny, man. When every time I get asked this, I always change my answer, and I look back and I go, "Fuck, I got to keep the same answer." But um, man, they they they're all they're all yeah. so so good. Um, I'm really I like the warning, but I'm more I'm a fan of really rage year up, you know, um, up until I mean, Mind Crime's a masterpiece. I think one album in its entirety to listen to. Fuck, man, that's such a hard question. Oh. It's a tie up between. Rage for Order and, Emp- and uh, sorry, Operation Mindcrime. Yeah, but I think I'd go with Rage for Order just because it's so, so, so dark and moody, and Jeff's voice is incredible. Well, uh, favorite song would be, I don't know. What's your favorite Queen's like song? Man? I mean, I've got so many. Like, um, I mean, Screaming and Digital. Remember, we were Amazing messaging about song. that. Um, yeah, it did. A Dream in Infrared, like Rage. But then, if like when you get into Operation Mindcrime, a concept album, the lyrics right. are so intense on that, and it's um, just a great story. I mean, um, so I mean, I, I, I like, yeah, I'm like you, Rage, The Warning, um, oh, yeah, man. Operation, and and just everything. You know, even a lot of the Empire stuff is is so underrated. Um, totally, man. I'm a big, big Promise Land fan as well, man. It, that's yep. an underrated album. We just, we just played that in its entirety. Mm-hmm. Um, and I used to be one of those people that it wasn't. I didn't like it as much because it didn't have as much guitar. But then learning it in guitar, you're like, oh, they've just been sneaky with it, you know. And yeah. now, now that's up there with my my favorites as well. Amazing album. Right on. Um, and you're quite a musician as well. You play piano very well. Um, growing up, um, did your parents, um, encourage you to take lessons or, or did you just at some point decide, you know what, music is uh, where I want to go in life? Thank you, man. Um, I'll, I'll disagree with you. I don't think I play piano well. I'd say, I'd say I attempt to play piano. Um, I, you know, I can, it takes me hours and hours to try and learn anything. I play it rarely. Um, but yeah, man, I, I, guitar player, when I found out. I wasn't a good enough singer, you know, so, um, <laughs> but yeah, I've always, always done guitar. I've been playing since I was like six years old and, um, you know, just, 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 it's all I, I don't sort of remember a time when I've not, not been playing guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, I was never really interested in school. I was more, you know, I was out playing in like kid bands and, um, you know, doing them. Um, it was a cool thing in Glasgow called Loud and Proud, which uh, put, yeah. puts all these, like if you're a talented musician, you know, at the young age, they put you in bands and, but this is this is just always always what I've I've seen myself doing and thank thankfully it worked out because I've got my hands tattooed and I'm I'm fucked if it doesn't but uh, thankfully I think I think Cole's good. It's funny how things uh, lead into things. I was going to ask you about your tattoos and you brought it up. I mean, um, when did you first start uh, getting ink and um, is there any 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 place on your body that you don't have any? And like I'm not trying to pry, but <laughs> honestly. <laughs> <laughs> really fell off my seat there. Um, I am. Um, I I've always loved that. Again, my um, my dad. I remember he he's covered now. He's got sleeves. But when I was younger, he had he had like a dragon and some Chinese writing and stuff. And that was back when it was like the, it wasn't like not everybody had tattoos, you know. Um, so as a kid, I just always wanted tattoos. And um, I actually I was gonna I was gonna I was like fifteen and I tried to sneak out to go to some guy's basement or something and get a tattoo. Yeah. And my dad was like, because I've been fucking saying, I want a tattoo, I want a tattoo. And he goes, right, we're going to family holiday to Las Vegas next year. If you wait till you're 16, I'll pay for your first tattoo and then we're yeah. cool. So um, I did that and my you know, mum and dad are super supportive. So uh, yeah, I got the nightmare before Christmas one. That was my first one in, in Vegas. And since then, I've just just not stopped. Um, I don't have much of my legs done. Um, uh, I don't have anything on my ass. Or my or my debt contrary to what people that there's that's a rumor going around as well that I've, I I I don't um, don't have my face I've one in my neck but I think um I think I'm gonna try and slow down a little bit because I don't yeah. I don't have much space you know I was just and, gonna uh, say you're gonna run out of real estate <laughs> right yeah I I think I'm gonna slow down yeah I wanna you know there's been a couple I've wanted to get and I've went, I've got no no space for that you know yeah um, but Jeff just Jeff just recently went to 
my friend in Seattle, he, he started getting them now. I think I've, I've converted him, you know. Jeff, wow, yeah. Speaking of Jeff, it's good to, good to hear he's doing great. And uh, <laughs> I think I read an interview. He said he's never really been in a hospital in his life. And then when he went in, it would, uh, it could have been a serious matter, but thank God, um, everything's going good. Um, so you're, yeah, man. you're going to hit the mainland in a couple of weeks and I guess you're going to do about a week of rehearsals or something. Yeah, bro. So we, we, I fly in on the 17th and then I think we have, I think the first show is not till like the, the first or second or something of December. So yeah. I good good two weeks of rehearsal in Seattle. Um, we're trying to make this show bigger. Um, I don't know if people have been seeing the kind of uh, the direction we're going in um, for the past couple of tours, but they've been a lot more, you know, theatrical in terms of sort of the way, you know, lighting and um, yeah. b- bigger, bigger, bigger stuff. So we've um, we're sort of trying to bring that in. We've got a uh, keyboard player Bruno Sa is back for this tour, um, and we've got a couple of a couple of surprises, man. So. You know, we're trying to make this as the big rock show, you know, right Christmas on. party tour. Right on. Okay, so uh, you guys start the uh, tour, I believe, in uh, Cleveland, uh, where they have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And then uh, you cross the states, I think, what's it, 15 shows? I'm just guessing. Maybe. I I couldn't tell you, brother. I just get in the bus. <laughs> I yeah. don't know oh, we were spe- playing. Speaking of that. Um, I saw in um, one of your social media posts, you're looking for a tour bus driver. <laughs> Did you find one yet? No, man. Do you, do you know how to drive a bus? It's a nightmare. We can't, we've been trying to find a bus driver for ages, and we've had some amazing guys doing it, but it's just, you know, the, the job's not full-time, so those guys are quite specialised. So, no, right now, we're in desperate need of a bus driver for that tour. So, if you, um, if you know Andy. Um, w- what about me? <laughs> You drive bro. Have you, have you got a CDL? Oh, you need one of those? No, I guess not. Yeah, man, that's that's the only thing. Like, I, dude, I'm like, you know, we we drive it, but you need a you need a CDL, um, which is a like a specialized yeah. license thing. So, you know, that's guys are sort of few and far between, and they're normally driving, you know, freight across America. So, but hey, if you know any of the CDL, or you get one. Well, man, we really need somebody. I'll, I'll bet you Chris DeGarmo's got one. I bet you if we were flying, right. <laughs> Okay, man. I won't uh, keep you much longer. I know it's um, it's well, it's, it's about six or five, well, five thirty or something in 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 uh, Glasgow. Um, before I let you go, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? Subscribe to this channel. That's what people need to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kieran, man. It was it's been a pleasure. Um, I look forward to seeing you uh, in Flint, Michigan. Um, I think I think it's the. Uh, maybe fourth or fifth show in but uh yeah i'll uh awesome, I'll look you up when i get there and uh yeah it was a pleasure man oh by the way <laughs> um favorite canadian band of all time do you have one rush no rush. questions man yeah right you can't go wrong <laughs> with uh with getty or uh the late neil or um, um alex so thanks again my friend and uh we'll see you in, in december hell yeah man i enjoyed talking to you thank you cheers Bye. We'll